My name is Jason Miller, and I wanted to help you fellow uh, farmers, agricultural employers, and others who uh, are looking to build housing for their employees um, and, and attempt to comply with California employee housing regulations. Kind of give you a real world uh, run through in what that's like, um, a few tips that I've learned along the way, and uh, just make a video to help you guys out. So um, we built this facility uh, in 2017 and it houses 18 employees. Um, it's a stick built home that we kind of designed from the ground up in order to, to house our uh, seasonal employees. So uh, I figured I'll talk a little bit about um, inspections and compliance, those various aspects, and then maybe take you through a quick tour of the place and then a few of the lessons maybe we've learned along the way uh, might help you out. So a couple of um, compliance related things that, that are helpful. There are a myriad of different documents that are published and um, it's difficult to wade through them. Um, there is the federal entity, so like the Department of Labor has created some guidelines. If you're here in California like us, California of course has added its layer of bureaucracy on top of that. And then there's also the EDD, which I think is somehow tied to the Department of Labor and they are yet another layer of bureaucracy related to uh, housing. So you kind of have three different entities all attempting to uh, regulate and um, define employee housing and how it, how it, uh, what it needs in order to be compliant. So um, there is this document right here, the Guide to State and Federal Requirements for Employee and Migrant Housing, um, that was helpful. It defines uh, federal regulations and then also breaks out California regulations where they differ from, from federal. Um, that's a big long document. There is another one published by the state of California, the HCD, the Housing and Community Development, um, called Employee Housing Facility Inspection Information Booklet. Um, it contains some of the summary of the regulations here in California. Um, and it was quite helpful in, in preparing the facility, but it is not comprehensive as we've learned. They sort of pick and choose uh, stuff that they're gonna include in each of these documents. And then, like I mentioned, we have the EDD and their housing inspection list and the things that they wanna see um, and, and that they look for. And so you've got three different entities attempting to inspect and regulate a facility. You can imagine that it is very cumbersome. Um, we have even received letters along the way. For example, this one that says, um, HCD will now be inspecting your housing. EDD will only do inspections of housing of four or less farm workers. And I got a call um, every month after that with EDD wanting to come inspect our facilities. So, even the agencies don't really know what they're doing um, and where their jurisdiction lies. So very confusing and, and I think it's important for um, employers to understand that some of the individuals at these agencies are interested in improving farm worker housing, the majority of them are not and don't be uh, fooled into believing that. They are interested in regulations, um, job security, fines, um, rework, paperwork, and they don't have any ability to think or make decisions, you know, of what would be best for employees. And they will sometimes be opposing. So one, one agency will want something and another agency will forbid that. Um, so it's, uh, and, and different agencies look for things. You know, one agency, something's very important. To other agencies, other things are important. Uh, making it very difficult. But like I said, we've learned along the way that the goal is not imp improving employee um, housing facilities. There are a number of things we've had to do to actually make our 
housing less comfortable and less safe for our employees in order to comply with the various um, agencies. I can point some of those out as we kind of go through the facility. But that's kind of an overview of all the entities that are involved if you're here in California. Um, we have housing in other states and there it's a little bit cleaner because usually the state hasn't layered on um, and, and caused additional uh, difficulty there. It's just the uh, federal agency coming out. So um, a little bit cleaner, um, but not without its uh, own, again, inspector um, nuances that, that matter uh, elsewhere that don't seem to, to be an issue here. So um, I'll talk a little bit about some of the things that we've learned. Most inspectors, I think some of the biggest things they look for are, are the smoke detectors operational, the battery's dead, um, the um, overall like sanitary conditions of the facility, um, the square footage, you know, making sure that things are uh, within regulation on if some of them are really big with their tape measure and they want to go around and measure every inch of everything and that's probably the main area where it's led to worse housing for our employees um, and and other ones you know we had one inspector that it was really important um, the blinds be on all the windows including the the open common areas it's not anywhere in any of the regulations um, but he said it was his department's uh, internal regulation. So, you know, rather than argue with the inspectors, you just, uh, we've generally complied even if there's no uh, documentation or regulation to back up what the inspector has decided would be his, um, his or her um, demands of the day. So, um, so that's a little bit, again, about those regulations. Um, they come up with new ones, so you got to stay up to date with that. Um, and there are regulations that aren't actually in the regulations that they can um, assign at any time, it, it is seemed. Um, so I'll show you our facility and, uh, and kind of what we built here, what's worked for us, uh, what, what maybe hasn't, and um, hopefully that will be helpful to you. So like I said, I'll give you a tour of the inside and outside of our employee housing facility. Um, we designed it to hold 18 employees, but uh, we currently only have 16. So it's registered for 16 employees. Starting outside, uh, the address needs to be on the building and the letters of a certain size. Um, we actually designed it with employee, or sorry, with RV hookups, a couple of them. Uh, one on this side and one on the other, so you can see water, sewer, and electric, that we could add a couple of additional units um, should we ever have the need arise. The propane tank um, has to be a certain distance from the building, given depending on the size of the tank, so that's something to be aware of. Um, no smoking signage on the propane tank. This is our fire suppression. Uh, for the house, because it's California house, you know, all California um, residential dwellings have to have fire suppression. So that's what we have there. This is an outdoor covered uh, eating area. A couple of recycling bins. This is our off season, so I don't have anybody here right now. You can see it's kind of closed up um, for the season. But this is where the majority of the cooking and uh, dining, hanging out occurs. We uh, have a commercial sink here and then four gas cooktops underneath um, for employees to, to use. The garage is right through this door and as you can see what we use, the garage is kind of an indoor uh, warmer area in the, in the winter um, for them to use. Fridges there, and then cabinets for food, a couple microwaves. One of the cool things is the garage door, when it's open, this big screen can be, uh, rolls down on its own set of rollers, and then there's a door right in the center, so uh, you can still get the breeze, but yet don't need to open up 
the, the full garage. All right, back outside, and now we'll do the inside of the facility. As you enter in, uh, you have our small kitchen area, a common dining area, and then to the left here is a mudroom. So each of the bedrooms has their own uh, locker where they can put boots and coveralls and various things all the way around. We also have washer and dryer um, for laundering those dirtier items. Like I mentioned this kitchen is generally just used for coffee and morning breakfast. Most of the cooking occurs outside or in the garage, um, as you saw earlier. In here is the laundry room. We've got two washers, two dryers. Uh, we designed it so that we have a standard gas, or sorry, electric water heater there. And then we have a on-demand gas that feeds into it. So when we have all the employees here, we can, we turn on that gas unit and then you have basically limitless hot water, um, internet, and then satellite TV fed to all the rooms for those that want to have a satellite service. So that's the laundry room. Um, the various posters, I'm sure that there's one or two missing. Uh, this is as best as I could find what was required. And uh, so we have those posted here in the, in the house. Down the hallway is where all the bedrooms and uh, bathrooms are. And so I'll just show you a couple of them. See a fire extinguisher down there. We also have a fire extinguisher out in the uh, garage, which is straight through that door. Um, and another one outside of that cooking area. So make sure you have your fire extinguishers. Show you a couple example rooms. and um, So you need 50 square feet per, per employee. We have two employees in each room. So these rooms are a little over 100 square feet. I think they're about 120. Um, various configurations depending on what employees wanted. And so in this room, we have a set of uh, twin bunk beds. Here's where we get into the really silly um, regulations that I was talking about earlier. So an example of that is right here you have bunk beds. We got nice mattresses for our employees. These are nice pillow top, um, you know, Sealy mattresses that you would want to sleep on. Um, unfortunately, we have to downgrade them for the inspections to those paper thin, um, horribly uncomfortable mattresses because you need a certain space between the top bunk and the bottom bunk and having a nice mattress does not comply. So um, uh, again, one of those areas of making the housing worse for the sake of compliance. Uh, another area as we continue on um, bad regs, according to the regulations, the bed needs to be 10 inches off the floor. To any reasonable human, I would think that would appear to be off the floor. Um, in fact, if I pick out a tape measure, you can pretty clearly see that that bed is, I don't know, 27, 28 inches off the floor. Well, according to California HCD, that is zero inches of space between the floor and the bed because we provided uh, some drawers here for employees to store their personal effects. Um, that bed is, according to the inspector, on the floor, and there is zero uh, inches of space. You probably think I'm making this stuff up. I'm not. Here are the violations. That there is less than 30 inches between these two, and that there is less than the required 10 inches of space underneath the bed. So, um, crazy, right? I'll show you another example of a bedroom um, again so these beds are like nine and something inches off the floor not the required 10 so we put these blocks under them um, making the beds a less comfortable height less stable but complying with the housing regulations um, I see here one of my employees has removed his blocks and so in making himself a more comfortable bed he is placing me possibly in violation of the uh, inspection code. Pretty silly, but it is what it is. And, and like I said, they bring out their tape measure and uh, they don't have any humor for what makes sense. It's simply what someone, some bureaucrat in an office decided uh, 
needed to be the free space uh, or space under a bed. Here's the bathrooms. They're basically identical. There's two of them. You have bathroom two right there, bathroom number one right here. Um, each bathroom has a couple of showers. I believe there's uh, one shower required per like 10 employees. So we have a lot of, a lot of showering capacity. Um, here's a standard toilet. And then in this particular bathroom, bathroom one has a urinal on, uh, on this side. So, um, the other bathroom is just regular toilets. Other than that, the bathrooms are identical twin sinks. Um, like I mentioned, identical bathrooms. So that's kind of a run through um, of the inside. That door just exits out the back of the house. And um, we also designed it so we could add on additional rooms going out that direction. Uh, should we someday need um, additional housing capacity. Each room we numbered just to keep things straight. There's smoke detectors. As I mentioned, those are important. Um, you want to make sure your batteries and, and smoke detectors are all operational and, and tested regularly. Each room, there's the uh, fire sprinkler in the room. Um, we designed it so you can put a ceiling fan in if employees wish to change out the standard fixture for a ceiling fan. Um, there's a rack for TV with their hookups, um, some closet space. And you can see in this one, uh, you know, an example of a couple of full beds rather than twin beds. Um, so they're just set up the way the, the different employees uh, wanted to have their rooms. And uh, here you've got some more bed space, but a little bit less room in the actual bedroom. Hope that was helpful to see the facility. If you've got any additional questions, you can uh, leave them in the comments section. And I'd be happy to, to reply. And uh, I hope this is helpful as you try to comply and design uh, farm worker housing or modify existing housing uh, to work for, for your farm workers. Thank you.